I went to the George Bush Intercontinental Airport a lot as a child. My mom often traveled for work. We visited my grandparents in Kansas every Christmas, and we'd have one long vacation a year where we could all be together. While driving to the airport, we always passed by this glorious Greek-like temple with the words "La Luz del Mundo" on it with bold letters. I was enthralled by this sudden masterpiece of architecture appearing in the North Houston Plains, especially the biblical stories depicted. Although I never knew what any of them were. In fact, I had no idea what La Luz del Mundo even was. Was it a theme restaurant a la medieval times? Was it a museum? A memorial? What was it? A few years ago, curiosity got the best of me, and I finally looked it up. And do you know what La Luz del Mundo is? It's a breakaway Christian sect. I was just as surprised as you are, dear reader, especially when I read all about their history and beliefs. Brace yourselves. We're in for one hell of a sect. Hey guys, it's Flower Gothic. In all of my years of complaining, I never thought that I would have to talk about religion, especially of the charismatic Christianity kind. But curiosity has killed the cat, and the devil has brought her back. And that curiosity was the church, La Luz del Mundo, the weirdest Christian sect you've never heard of. You see. La Luz del Mundo is based in the city of Guadalajara, Mexico, and though the statistics are dodgy, most of their followers live in Central America. So, not only is most of the information on this church in Spanish, but unless you live in a part of the U.S. with a high Hispanic population, you have most definitely never heard of it. While doing research on this video, I checked to see if any other YouTuber has done a piece on La Luz del Mundo, and what did I find? Nothing, or at the very least, nothing that was in English. <sighs> that wasn't about the leaders' controversies, which we will get to eventually. La Luz del Mundo deserves a place in the spotlight too, just like Jehovah's Witnesses in the LDS. I cannot promise you our particularly peachy piece on the preaching, but I will do my best to make a well-rounded argument about La Luz del Mundo. From its history to its beliefs to its scandals. But before I begin, I'm gonna take some time to clarify my own religious beliefs. I am an agnostic atheist who was raised without religion, aside from the occasional Bible story from my super Catholic grandmother. And as a result, I don't really have much of a sense of faith in my life, and frankly, I'm fine with that. And I also don't think there are many differences between old and new religions aside from age, but that we shouldn't discriminate against people for their religious beliefs. There are much better things to be mad about. A Luz del Mundo, or Iglesia del Dios Vivo, Columna y Apoyo de la Verdad, La Luz del Mundo, Church of the Living God, Pillar and Ground of the Truth, the Light of the World goes back to 1926. Now, in 1926, Mexico was faced with the Cristero War, a holy war, a war brought about in central western Mexico in response to the government limiting the Catholic Church's power. During this conflict, there was a man named Asuebo Joaquin Gonzalez. He was an ordinary man of 30, having served in the rebellion during the Mexican Revolution. He was born in 1896 to a Catholic family, but converted to Pentecostalism in the 1920s after marrying his wife, Elisa Flores. They joined a duo of Pentecostal ministers named Saul and Silas, and they traveled around the country to spread their good word. Yet, in the eyes of La Luz del Mundo, he was destined for greatness. And on April 6, 1926, Asuebo Joaquin got a vision from God in his sleep. God told him to change his name to Aaron and to bring about religious change in Mexico. Now, why Aaron, dear viewers? I was confused too, and was about to make a corny joke about my ex-boyfriend. But it has biblical significance. For you see, Aaron is the brother of Moses, and the first chosen high priest of Israel. It's metaphorical in that sense that 
God would ask a swear boat to take on Aaron's name. He accepted this divine intervention and started preaching in front of shuttered Catholic churches all over Mexico. However, he faced a shit ton of prosecution, especially since he advocated a rather literal interpretation of the Bible and he challenged the dominant religion. He eventually settled in Guadalajara and opened up his first church. In his wife's apartment, he would meet with 10 people every Sunday who would eventually become the church hierarchy. More people joined in and the first official temple was built in 1934. Aaron Joaquin encouraged his members to buy homes around this church, thus establishing a central community. However, not all was well. Over 250 members defected from the church in 1942. Why? Well, Aaron Joaquin developed kind of a cold personality. Instead of traditional Christian humbleness, he was over the moon that people sang to him and praised him on his birthday. In some Christian denominations, this is considered idolatry and is considered very, very wrong. In the 1950s though, Aaron Joaquin made a comeback by establishing Hermosa Provincia, a kind of model community for La Luz Mundo practitioners so that they can be the best Christians possible and as a result, the best citizens for Mexico. They, they funded the entirety of the community, establishing education, healthcare, and even reduced land prices. It was not without its dissenters though. Some in the area feared that Aaron Hawking was allowed to establish this community due to his connections with the military and the rather authoritarian Industrial Revolutionary Party, which was in power in Mexico until 2000. But the community was a success and was used as a blueprint for establishing a La Luz del Mundo presence all over the world. By the time Aaron Hawking died in 1964, over 64 congregations had been built. So who took over after Aaron Hawking's death? His youngest son, Samuel Joaquin Flores. Under his thumb, the beautiful flagship Guadalajara Temple was built. He set up missions all around the Americas and the world. He continued to pass on his father's teachings until his death in 2014. Samuel Joaquin's successor was his son, Nason Joaquin Garcia. And Nason Joaquin continues his father's legacy of being a missionary and carrying on the good word. And that's where the history ends. Should be noted though that he is particularly endeared with the church. That'll become important later, guys. So, I know I'm not a Christian. I told y'all that like five minutes ago, but I have a significant amount of family that was raised Catholic and has at least some knowledge about Protestantism. So I've enlisted their help, particularly my dad's, in order to try and compare and contrast La Luz del Mundo teachings with more traditional Christianity. The Holy Trinity is a good place to start. In Catholicism, the Holy Trinity consists of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three separate entities that are also the same and always watching you. Don't yell at me in the comments for this. I am literally quoting from my dad here. La Luz del Mundo rejects the Trinity claiming it was added later and not a part of TRUE Christianity. They think God is one person and should be worshipped by essence, and Jesus, as the Son of God, should be worshipped by command, or rather, decree of divine law. And guess what? If you were baptized in a Christianity sect that believed in the Trinity, you weren't baptized correctly! So, if it turns out La Luz del Mundo is the true religion, you would better get over to your nearest temple and get baptized in it. Aaron Hawking's name in order to be saved. Yay! Though, I know that's how several religions work, but isn't it a little unfair to say that your religion is the one way to true salvation? Speaking of which, another difference between the true churches is salvation itself. In the Catholic Church, the way to achieve salvation is to let God into your heart and to be confirmed as a Catholic. 
And you must perform good deeds and do all your Catholic things to be accepted into heaven. La Luz do Mundo agrees that baptism is the way to salvation, but that no one before Aaron Joaquin was saved. Why? Well, because the church got so corrupt over the decades that Aaron Joaquin was the first pure person to ever be saved in, I guess, thousands of years. So how do you get saved? You have to follow the teachings of Aaron Joaquin, which is a rather cultish way of claiming the path to eternal life. Kind of reminds me of the Unification Church and their encouragement for you to follow the path of true father, Sun Myung Moon. Now, how about rituals? I've only been to one Catholic Mass in my life, but from what I remember, we got dressed up, sat down, stood up, sang songs, watched men in silly robes, discussed biblical stories, and we were surrounded by Jesus! And from what my dad can remember from his weekly church meetings, he also repeatedly sat down and stood up, and even played guitar for his church youth group. La Luz de Mundo separates the sexes during worship for purity. They also sing only an a cappella at the same time in order to achieve harmony with God Jesus or something. And, 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 there are no crosses or any images of Jesus in their churches because that's idolatry. That's not ironic. Like Catholics, Luz del Mundo doesn't practice the ordination of women. They claim it's because it wasn't allowed in the original Bible. <sighs> they can have a limited role of ceremonies though, like reading from the holy book and leading youth group activities. But women are allowed, in fact encouraged, to pursue education and to obtain professional jobs. Even within like public relations in the church. And yeah, that, that's about it. They're encouraged to get a good education and get good jobs. <laughs> but before you consider this church feminist, women have a really strict dress code. They have to wear modest skirts, modest shirts, no makeup, they cannot cut their hair, and La Luz de Mundo also practices traditional gender roles. So even if the wife of a household is a working woman, a working professional, she is still expected to carry on cooking and cleaning in the household. <sighs> From what I've researched, women in La Luz de Mundo are fine with this, but I can't say that's the same for everyone. Other than that, La Luz de Mundo does not celebrate Christmas or Easter. The reason for not doing so is the same logic as Jehovah's Witnesses. They have pagan influences! Instead, La Luz de Mundo celebrates Los Patismos, a series of meanings intended to reignite your relationship with God by speaking in tongues and <laughs> trying to encounter the Holy Spirit. They also celebrate Santa Cena on Aaron Joaquin's birthday. Hmm, I wonder why. It is a big deal with La Luz de Mundo practitioners all over the world coming to Hermosa Provincia in order to celebrate and pray and become pure by not swearing and listening to secular music. And everyone just catches up. So it's kind of like Christmas. Except, you know, without the pagan influences. Now, I will say this again. I don't believe in discriminating against people for their religious beliefs. There have been numerous reports on La Luz del Mundo practitioners being treated like second-class citizens in Mexico. So, before I get on with these controversies, let me say, do not, do not harass anyone associated with this church. The cult of personality the Joaquin family has developed is an obvious source of controversy. They are considered the apostles in La Luz del Mundo, the saviors of humanity, the people that are going to make Christianity great again. They also seem to have a lot of wealth, just like many charismatic Christianity leaders, amassing 
$7.3 million worth of luxury property in the United States, along with a $4.9 million exotic zoo outside of San Antonio, Texas. It should be noted that a portion of this zoo is registered as a nonprofit and is claimed to be a wildlife preserve. Between 2001 and 2008, this zoo amassed over $1 million in donations from church members. Practitioners involved with this zoo claim that they are indeed rehabilitating wildlife and intended to open the public part of the reserve, the nonprofit part of the reserve, to the public. And upon stumbling on a Facebook page, I think that has happened, though at a much lesser extent than what was implied. It still seems rather bizarre, though, that a wealthy family would spend so much money on an exotic wildlife reserve when there's a perfectly good zoo in San Antonio. A more recent scandal in the news is about sexual misconduct. On June 4th, 2019, Nassan Joaquin and two other church members were arrested in Los Angeles, California and charged with 26 felonies, including child rape and human trafficking. The church strongly denies these accusations and is even encouraging its members to pray for Nassan Joaquin's safe return to Mexico. Now, as of this taping, none of the people involved have stood trial. And the judge is still trying to decide whether or not there is enough evidence for them to stand trial. And the court is the place where justice will be ruled on those who are guilty. So, and what I'm about to say, so I don't get sued, please add a big allegedly in the front of it. According to the prosecution, Nassan Joaquin's victims were told that they would be going against God's will if they didn't perform sex acts with him. They also collected thousands of photos and videos from his personal belongings, some including child pornography. LA County obtained a tip in 2018 from a girl identified as Jane Doe A. Jane Doe A was instructed to deliver Nassan Joaquin coffee in his office while naked. And when she arrived, he touched her inappropriately, fondled her, and kissed her. And this woman isn't even 16. An investigation was subsequently launched and the California Attorney General obtained three more tips, only one of whom coming from a person over the age of 18. And she learned some rather disturbing information about Nassan Joaquin, which I will not talk about because it's, it's bad guys. It's really, really bad. And since Samuel Joaquin has some sexual assault allegations under his belt as well, it didn't look good for Nassan Joaquin. But before you side completely with the prosecution, let me say this. The attorneys prosecuting Nassan Joaquin were fined in order to hand over evidence after failing to do so. Though the fines were rescinded at the request of the Attorney General and the prosecution was replaced. Now, do I believe Nassan Joaquin sexually abused people? I can't say. I don't know him, I don't know anyone associated with La Luz do Mundo, but I can't say that I'd be surprised if it turns out he was guilty. There have been countless, countless reports of people in places of power and religion abusing their followers for their own sick sexual pleasures, and it disgusts me, really. So. I am not willing to call Nassan Joaquin innocent in this scenario. What I will say, though, is that families have been torn from these allegations. <sighs> the Joaquins are so central to La Luz Mundo's doctrine that criticizing them at all or claiming that there may be some truth to those allegations is the equivalent to blasphemy. People who left the church say that they've felt a sense of alienation and that they've been torn from their families because Nassan Joaquin, according to them, is innocent and that he's, this is all part of a cover-up. Those who have put their faith in a man they have seen as godly are being punished for something they didn't do and people who left the church are now feeling isolated and unable to help their family. So is La Luz del Mundo a cult? To be honest, I don't know. 
It still follows the practices of biblical literalism, but it reminds me of traditional American evangelicalism, especially of the charismatic kind. They support Bible authoritarianism. They believe in God Jesus. However, they also put a spotlight on the founder and his family. But they've also put a spotlight on his family, which, as I mentioned before, is the idolatry they are supposedly against. They can't question the Hawkins without being punished for criticism. And Masson Joaquin, I will say this. Let your followers have free will. Let them challenge your religion. Let them question their beliefs. Because the freedom of thought and the freedom of expression are the best gifts you can give anyone. Anyone. Don't expect your followers to accept everything you spoon feed them. Remember that. Please.